Hi there, I'm Barak Dunayir. And I'm Jackie Teplitsky. And we're managing partners at the Teplitsky Dunayir team at Douglas Elliman. Today, we're going to talk about what's on everybody's mind, inflation. And the other thing we're going to talk about, we hear about it from our clients every day, is buying versus renting and how it affects us and affects the market and affects the buyers and affects the sellers in inflationary times. So first, we're going to talk about inflation mm -hmm. and figure out why it's here. Well, we have a lot of pent up demand after the pandemic, okay? We have supply chain issues. Again, people are looking for goods, looking for services, and companies and manufacturers are not able to keep up with the demand. Uh, we also have a lot of people sitting on a lot of cash. I, heard, I read somewhere $2 trillion worth of cash that people saved over the pandemic. They didn't travel, they didn't buy anything. So that's there. And also unemployment is much lower today because companies are rushing to hire post-pandemic. And they have to pay higher salaries. They do. So people have more money in their pocket. There's a lot of demand, short supply. That leads to inflation. Now, real estate is very often talked about as a hedge against inflation. Yeah. Usually real estate is tied to debt. Most people buy with some kind of a mortgage. And if they're able to get a mortgage at a fixed interest rate, that debt stays the same while the equity steadily rises over time. There are not a lot of fluctuations uh, like other assets in real estate. It just tends to rise over time. Equity is being built up. The debt stays the same. And that's really a good hedge against inflation. Not to mention uh, that rents are rising. And we're going to talk about that. Mm -hmm. And if you're an investor and you rent, if your debt payments stay the same and you're raising the rents, you're left with more money in your pocket. But now let's take it the other, the other side. We talked about investors and landlords are doing well right now. Mm -hmm. What about the tenants? We get a lot of tenants uh, and now tenants looking to buy and debating whether you should buy or rent, Jackie. Correct, because this is what is happening. So most of the rentals, most of the leases are coming due now, correct? May and June, that's mm -hmm. usually the expiration. And when people now are opening a dialogue with their landlords, those landlords are not talking about increases of 4 to 5%. Yeah. They want to basically cover their losses for the last two years, not only on the low rent that they had to um, give in to, but also they gave a lot of incentives. Right. Two months free rent, three months free rent, no broker fee. So all of that is out the window. And now we're talking about 10 to 15%, and I'm hearing even 20% increase, which yeah. is crazy. That's like, you know, basically... It's a shell shock. Okay. It's a shell shock, and it's a free market. Right. So... The question that everybody has to ask themselves is this five, six, you know, 10% increase versus the 4% interest rate, correct? And the fact that you're going to build equity if you buy an apartment versus if you actually rent an apartment and just throw that money away, you know, out the window. And it's not a long term, it's short term because most of the leases in New York City are basically done with one year with an option of a second year. So that means that every two years you have to move. Every two years you have to pay all the fees on the moving costs, moving costs on the in and on the out because right. you have to leave one apartment and you have to move to another apartment. Now another thing that I can tell you that um, over the weekend I was with a, a lot of young people and they were all telling me that their friends basically that moved out from the city because they could uh, uh, work uh, remotely are bored and they're coming back into the city. So, and they're coming back in big numbers and also people from overseas that basically couldn't even get into the States. Yeah. So we are going to see more increase in the rents and the, on the buying side, the prices are still reasonable. We are not seeing that steep, you know, uh, rise in uh, in apartment prices. So we are still okay with prices. Yes, we have a little bit of higher uh, interest rates, but as you said, and you're going to um, uh, tell us how the whole thing with interest rates and uh, hedging against against inflation actually works beautifully together if you buy. Yes. So when you buy, you're able to build equity. On one hand, especially if you get fixed interest rates, um, your, int your, your interest payments stay the same, okay? But your value rises steadily over time. And so you build the equity and the value of the debt actually stays, becomes lower. As, as the value of money becomes lower, 
the value of your debt becomes lower because that stays fixed, the payment stays fixed. And on the, on the flip side of this, the, in, the rental, rental uh, rates are directly tied to inflation. So in inflationary times like we have now, rents, not to mention all the demand that you mentioned, all the new people, the young people coming back, not to mention about the landlord trying to make up for everything they lost, all those things, just inflation, rising rates. Inflation, rising rates, it happens every time. Correct. So once again, I'm Barak Tunayer. And I'm Jacob Flitzke. And it's been our pleasure to speak with you today about inflation, about renting versus buying, and all those good things. If you'd like to hear more, stay tuned and there'll be more.